On September 27, 2022, in the north of the United States, a plane rose to the sky. An unusual plane. It has no pistons, no turbines, no gasoline, no kerosene. What it does have is a futuristic appearance, great risks and no less ambitions. Yes, into the heavenly wonderland flies the electric Alice, a plane the very concept of which was considered ineffective. Let's see if it manages to change this opinion. I present to you the Aviation Alice. The Israeli company Aviation, whose name can be deciphered as Electric Aviation, was founded not so long ago, in 2015. The company's goal was to create an electric aircraft. Moreover, not an urban vertical aircraft, as it is now very fashionable to announce, but precisely a full-fledged small aircraft. This task is very difficult. Many try to use electric motors as the basis for the power plant of aircraft, from local inventors to large firms. But given that we still fly on good old gasoline kerosene, their initiatives did not seem to succeed. But at the beginning of the 21st century, the development of technologies for engines, batteries, the reduction in cost of their production, the emergence of more or less widespread electric ground transport, and the prevalence of environmental problems pushed the industry forward. And the founders of aviation decided that they could create such an aircraft, or at least try with a sufficient chance of success. Given the complexity of the task and the risks, the aviators were in no hurry, gathering partners who could help, both financially and technologically. I will note that initially, the ambitions were very big. Aviation wanted to make two aircraft at once. One, a kind of light and cheap air taxi, without cabin pressurization and with simple equipment. And the second, already cooler option from the niche of business aviation, with a full set of equipment, a more powerful engine and better performance. But over time they decided to concentrate and make one plane. Of course, the cooler one. In 2018 they created a prototype. To scale. It was a 290 kg remote controlled model that had to confirm the overall concept. And it confirmed that the plane had good aerodynamics and was well controlled. The main challenge was of course not the airframe, but the power plant, and first of all its energy source, batteries, still too limited in capacity and heavy. Aviation decided that improved lithium polymer batteries could solve this problem. The engines were not simple either. The company was choosing between the offspring of the American Magni X and the German Simmons, and their choice fell on the Magni X Magni 250 engine, capable of delivering 375 horsepower. Three of these should have been enough. At the same time, Magni X was not just a contractor. A 70% stake in aviation was soon bought by Singapore-based investment company Claremont Group, which also owned Magni X. As a result, in 2019, Aviation, having already attracted about $200 million in investments, also received a large and wealthy patron. With such resources, it was possible to step wider. While scientific work was being carried out in the USA, a prototype was being assembled in France, already a full-fledged one. It was first shown at the Paris Air Show in the summer of 2019. The unusual V-tail aircraft with wingtip engines definitely attracted attention. By the end of the year, Aviation already had a portfolio of orders for about 150 aircraft at an average cost of $4 million per unit. Considering the likely discounts for launch customers, it turns out that for its price, it is in the category of aircraft such as the Pilatus PC-12. Though 2020 was off to a bad start. There was a fire on the prototype, the battery compartment ignited. Who would have thought? No one was hurt, but the plane was lost. Shortly after the loss of the prototype, Aviation announced that they were creating a new one and were planning to make some changes to its design. When the prototype was presented to the public, it turned out that some of the changes were a fundamental revision of the design. Why this was done remained a mystery. Apparently that option was too tricky, and the new aircraft turned out to be much more conservative in terms of layout. It was this plane that in the end made the first flight, and can be considered the final version, so we can describe it in more detail. So, the Aviation Alice is… well, on the surface it is more or less a classic aircraft. 
the fuselage widening at the bottom and strongly elongated in the tail section. A straight wing with winglets at the tips, a T-tail with a large fin, a tricycle landing gear and two engines with pulling propellers on pylons in the tail. The airplane, I must admit, is very stylish. Length 17.4 meters, wingspan 19.2 meters, height 3.84 meters. Maximum takeoff weight, approximately 8,350 kilograms. Wow! For example, the Cessna Sky Courier weighs 8.6 tons, and that for a moment is a hefty 19-seat transport with two turboprops. And this is despite the fact that Alice is as composite as possible. New materials account for more than 90% of the airframe. Here the guys went all out. Meanwhile, the maximum payload of the aircraft is 1,130 kilograms. The fuselage outline resembles an elongated drop, making a cabin quite roomy with a maximum height of 1.5 meters and a width of 1.93 meters. In a normal passenger configuration, it can accommodate 9 seats. The business class cabin accommodates 6 people, but has a toilet and more comfortable chairs. The third, cargo version with an empty cabin has a volume of about 12.7 cubic meters. In the tail section of the aircraft, there is a luggage compartment, which is accessed through a large door on the port side behind the wing. The landing gear was made for the aircraft by the Italian Magnaghi Aeronautica, which already supplies these elements to the flying Ferrari Piaggio Avanti. The avionics and flight system, including automatic landing, will be supplied by Honeywell. The cockpit has two seats, quite an ordinary configuration, but is equipped with modern solutions, fly-by-wire, touchscreens and side sticks. The power plant in the new version has been seriously revised. The exotic scheme with three pusher engines, two of which are on the wingtips, is a thing of the past, giving way to a pair on the tail. Since there are now fewer engines, their power had to be increased. So, the 375 horsepower Magni 250 gave way to the 950 horsepower Magni 650. Next, I have to talk about the flight performance, and here, alas, Alice starts to have problems. And the main problem is, yes, the batteries again. It was originally planned that the aircraft would receive high capacity batteries capable of providing a range of 550 to 650 miles, 10 to 1200 kilometers, which can be considered quite a decent indicator. But the reality turned out to be cruel. The technology does not keep up with the aircraft, and it had to be equipped with batteries the capacity of which is less and the mass is greater. The answer to the question why is Alice so heavy? The battery pack alone weighs about 3.7 tons. The reduction in capacity led to the fact that its planned range is up to 440 miles, about 800 kilometers, which is just sad. Even sadder were the results of the flight tests, after which Aviation stated that the range of Alice at the moment is only 250 miles. 460 kilometers. For an aircraft, that's good for nothing, which led to many jokes that passengers should take power banks with them on the flight to increase the flight range. For aviation, this range is a big challenge for the coming years. The flight speed for the aircraft can reach 260 knots, 480 kilometers per hour, the level of close piston twin engine aircraft. Takeoff and landing will require a runway up to 840 meters. Ground testing of the prototype began in December 2021. The Aviation Alice made its first flight in September 2022 at the airport of Moses Lake, Washington. It was at the beginning of tests that Aviation announced the reduction of flight range and the start date for operation at the same time shifted to the right, settling around 2027. The company's plans for the development of their project remain relevant. It is quite possible that over the next few years, before the start of serial deliveries, they will nevertheless receive the necessary batteries and will be able to bring the performance of the aircraft to the desired level. And if they succeed, the aircraft can seriously affect the market. And it's not even about environmental friendliness, which of course is already emphasized, but also about the economy. Electricity is cheaper than kerosene, electric motors are easier to maintain, and the entire aircraft becomes cheaper due to this. 
According to aviation's calculations, an Alice flight hour should cost about $200, which is significantly cheaper than similar piston aircraft, not to mention turboprops and especially jets. Although, given the limitations in terms of performance, in particular in terms of range, Alice will effectively compete with them only in a limited market for short-range routes. But the aviators are optimistic, saying that 45% of routes less than 565 miles actually have a range of 260 miles, and this is precisely the niche Alice is claiming, at least for now. Perhaps, aviation's plans are real even with limitations. Alice will be able to conquer the market, becoming over time better and better. Perhaps we are on the verge of the birth of an electric aviation industry that is cheap, environmentally friendly and efficient. Or maybe it is all a good face for a bad game, and the battery problem still pushes electric aircraft to the ground. Who knows? At least a few customers with a very decent portfolio believe in it. In any case, we aviation fans and customers of this miracle will be watching. Comment what you think about Alice and her prospects. And if you want to watch the videos early, see some exclusive behind the scenes content or just support the channel, consider joining our Patreon community. Fast flights on different interesting planes and soft landings to you.